Mike Blyway, I'm a law student here and I get uh, my coverage of the election exclusively from 538. Um, and <laughs> and uh, I, I, I do that largely because of the unbiased nature, except for Harry's unabashed love for Chris Christie. But, uh, the, you know, I, I noticed that specifically in your debate coverage, one of the things that you, you all always mention is that the mainstream media's portrayal of the debate matters more than anything else. Whether, you know, when, when, when yeah. they say that someone wins, that, that coverage carries. And then at the end of those pieces, you and your staff put together grades for how the, the candidates did. And you may see where I'm going with this. You strike me as someone who would rather uh, predict rather than influence, but do you see yourself playing into this zeitgeist where you could carry some weight in, say, this election? I mean, that's why the primaries, although they're fun, are are a little tricky. Like, I think in the general election, people are fairly sensible and retreat to their corners. But the primaries are so momentum driven that it's a little bit it's a little bit weird. And I'm sure people do read um, what we say and so forth. It's kind of not the type of influence that I want. At the same time, um, you know, the fact is that all news coverage is influential, and I think. I would say, at the very least, we promise some some self awareness that we're aware that um, the way the events are covered by the press can affect voters' views. Sometimes the press can be surprised; it doesn't go the way they expect. But you can have these big feedback loops, um, and I'm surprised how difficult it is. I think one big edge we have. I'm glad that you read us, right? But I think one big edge we have over um, over say the New York Times or something, is that we can talk about the media as a political actor. Um, now, we are the media, too, and so I'm kind of aware of the circularity of that. Um, you know, frankly, I think one reason why during the primaries, sometimes the conservative sites are more interesting to read than liberal sites, is that they also start out being more suspicious of the media, sometimes in ways that I think are are wrong, like about the polls in 2012, but I think um, having that skepticism and seeing the, the, the media as a political actor instead of a kind of benevolent umpire is to a first approximation the right way to do things, and that's reflected in our coverage. You know, I guess sometimes at the risk of being, um, being a little bit hypocritical, potentially. Um, but we do try and be very transparent about um, what, is a, what, is what we think is a fact, um, What's an opinion? What's an analysis? Um, you know, kind of what is a a provocation? One reason why I like your blog is that you have a lot of provocations, right? And they're clearly sometimes you put the Tyrone label <laughs> on it, but um, but it's clear what they are, right? It's clear that they're provocations meant to incite discussion and debate. Um, and so we'll have we'll have a few of those too at times. But kind of um, you know, speaking in the first person, I think, is important and breaking from the kind of voice of God where a, you know, a storm cloud gathered on New Hampshire today and the voters decided that, um, you know, speaking as a subjective individual trying to understand what the objective world is like is a lot of what we're, we're all about. Um, and it's not for everyone, but I think that should be reflected at least in the, in the tone and approach of our coverage, even where we wind up getting things wrong.